I chose this T-shirt for today because it is one of my favorites, and not just that. It is also a symbol for me. It comes from a company that rethought how fashion design decisions are made. Traditionally, fashion designers decide on next seasons, colors, forms, shapes, in their ivory towers. These guys took a different approach. They accept t-shirt designs from all over the world and let people vote on them. With enough votes, the design goes to production. Simple as that. Now, this approach of empowering people, of using the help of the crowd, is very close to what I want to talk to you about today. That is, citizen science. During the last year, I worked together with the Swedish research group who is creating a map of how all human proteins are distributed in our bodies. It's called a human protein atlas. It is a huge database of millions of images that over 100,000 researchers use every month to understand human biology better, to fight diseases and to create more efficient drugs. Now, for the images to be useful, first, they need to classify the patterns and then localize the corresponding protein. Images like these ones. These beautiful, almost hallucinatory images tell us stories about proteins. They're comprised of layers of different colors, highlighting different parts of the cell. The green layer shows us the location of one protein. Now, to understand the location, we need some landmarks. And for landmarks, we use the blue color channel, which gives us the center of the cell, the DNA in the nucleus, and the red lines. That's the cytoskeleton that gives us an idea about the spatial extent of the whole cell. Now, using this information, scientists can specify the location of the protein in question and can draw conclusions about its functions. In this example, you see large spaghetti-like green areas around the blue. That's how we know that this protein is part of the mitochondria, the cell's powerhouse. Now, if there is a problem with the mitochondria in the heart tissue, for example, that can lead to heart failure. So, researching the proteins expressed in the mitochondria can lead us to a better understanding of energy production in cells, and ultimately, it gives us the chance to create better drugs to prevent heart failure. There is a big problem, though, that scientists face. In many cases, to get good enough results, someone has to manually classify these images. Artificial intelligence still can't beat the good old human eye. It may one day, but right now, it's a huge bottleneck in research. But there's no need to worry. We are very inventive as human beings. Enter citizen science, a beautiful concept that lets us, ordinary people, participate in top-notch scientific research. Sweet. I already feel that the burning desire to help scientific advancement is boiling up in all of you. Well, I have very good news for you. Actually, you can do this when you go home. You just open up your laptop, type in Zooniverse, for example, and start your very own citizen scientist career. You choose a project from the many, get a brief training, and start your first classification. Once done, you press the Submit button. Wow, amazing feeling. You just had a very important scientific research project. Yes, you did. And you also made some scientists very happy. And yourself, too. I mean, helping science feels great. Not to mention that you learn some interesting stuff while classifying proteins, galaxies, plankton, or whatever you care to imagine. 
So with this momentum, you dive into your second classification and the third and so on and so on, and you won't stop until you're finished with thousands of images. Well, actually, I was lying to you at this moment. In reality, you may do a second one, maybe even a third. But after that, you will say, OK, guys, thank you, brilliant. That was enough for me. And I'm not saying this because I'm a pessimist or because I don't believe in you. But the last 15 years of citizen science data tells us that a vast majority of people leave these projects after a couple of classifications. And the worst thing is that you will never come back. And it doesn't matter how good it feels to help science. It doesn't matter that you may be the first to see that galaxy far, far away. And it doesn't matter that all the heavy artillery of gamification is targeting you with points, badges, rewards, leveling up, and the rest. Most of the people simply don't find this activity engaging enough. So we end up with not so happy scientists and us, well, us maybe having a bit of a bad conscience for letting them down. Two years ago, with a friend, we started to think about how to keep you engaged. And we immediately identified the place where a massive number of people are already solving complex problems voluntarily. Let me show you an example. So you hop into your spaceship and fly to an abandoned space station. Well, free your mind, people actually do that. So you hop into your spaceship, fly to an abandoned space station, and open up your hacking terminal and try to breach the main computer. Once your hack succeeds, you catch the capsule that is ejected from the space station and claim your reward. Now, would you do this a thousand times? Oh, yes. <laughs> you would. And it's not just you, but hundreds of millions of people do that every day all around the world. We're talking about video games. Video games are huge and super engaging. And make no mistake, the problems that you have to solve in video games are often as complex as those in scientific research. <coughs> but just to give you an example of how huge a resource gamers' brain powers is, let me refer to Jane McGonagall, game designer. She claims that in World of Warcraft, one of the big, massively multiplayer online games, people together have played almost six million years. <laughs> that is six million years of learning, of solving virtual problems, and of course, killing orcs. <laughs> six million years is crazy. It's geological time scale. Now, if you can take these scientific problems, convert them, and inject them into major computer games as a seamless gaming experience, integrating it with the narrative, with the visuals, with the game mechanics, with the reward system, we can tap into this huge resource. And if we manage to convert just a tiny fraction of the billions of hours spent on gaming every week to something useful in real life, we would get a virtually infinite human computation engine to help science. And that is going to be a game changer. This is what we call massively multiplayer online science. Now, you may ask, seamless integration of games and science? Well, just imagine that in the previous example, when you're flying around with your spaceship, you get a biological sample which, by the way, comes from the human protein atlas. And that's what you have to analyze. Or your kids are playing with zoo tycoon, and time to time they get a photo of wild animals so they can help a research project in the Serengeti National Park while playing. 
or you wander around in the post-apocalyptic radiation-infested world of Fallout 4, and after killing a mutant creature, you take a tissue sample. That tissue sample could come from the human protein atlas. And again, a perfect match with the storyline and the visuals. With a little creativity, almost any problem can be integrated into a game. These screens are mostly my visions of how it could be done. But it even gets better when we get the pros of the game industry involved. So we had this crazy idea about two years ago. But we got even more crazy. We wanted to make this thing happen. So we created a company. And then we contacted many research groups from all over the world. And we got amazing responses and help from leading institutions and researchers. Very early in the process, the high-profile journal Nature Methods mentioned us. The magazine told me that probably this is the first time that they publish a screenshot from a video game. I told them, maybe the first, I bet not the last. Then we contacted the gaming industry, and we got the same enthusiastic responses. It is just inspiring to see how these big companies show their best altruistic side when it comes to helping science. As the director of one of the big video game companies put it to me, we are all in this together. If by playing this game, we could contribute to getting any closer to cure cancer, that would be our biggest reward. The first game that we contacted was EVE Online, the biggest science fiction-themed, massively multiplayer online game with hundreds of thousands of players. And they loved the idea. And now we're here, and in the last three weeks, this feature is out on the EVE Online public test servers. Players have generated almost 20,000 classifications just in the first days. And mark that on the test servers, there are usually a couple of hundreds of people. On the live servers, there are 30,000 people at any time. And all these players will have this feature at their fingertips in March. So as a preview, I brought you a very interesting screenshot. Let me introduce you Professor Lundberg. She's the in-game character who gives you these tasks. She's also the in-game person of Emma Lundberg, who is the science lead of the Subcellular Human Protein Atlas. So she will become the first scientist to have a permanent position in a video game. I can tell you that there are many researchers who are super envious of that. That is gaming history. Last summer, we showcased this feature at the annual gamer convention of EVE Online in Las Vegas. And for me, nothing shows more the commitment of scientists that Emma actually canceled her appearance at a cell biology conference to be able to come to Vegas and talk to players about this feature. And finally, but most importantly, we got great reception and amazing support from the gamers themselves. I think Eve Vegas was actually the first time ever that people outside the scientific community, or maybe anybody for that matter, were actually cheering for cell biology. That was super motivating. <laughs> so, as a closing thought, I'm not an advocate of video games, per se. Maybe you've never played a video game. Maybe you're an avid gamer yourself, or maybe you're just playing with your kids. The topic of video games and the role of the video games in itself is a very complex topic. Opinions range from a waste of time to it being the most complex contemporary art form. But if you enjoy video games. I urge you to let your guildmates, your teammates, your gaming community know about the possibility of massively multiplayer online games. I urge you to let your favorite gaming companies to know that you would be glad to play with games, play with science in their games. And finally, 
Just grab that game controller and do some science. Thank you. Mm -hmm.